Church, brothers and sisters, I'm your brother Kasafo, here with your brother Zakwa. Hope you all are enjoying the Shabbat today and everything is well with you all. And we had went over in the prior lesson, can't remember which one it was, Psalms 15 gave a little homework assignment of studying it and getting an understanding of what it was talking about so that we can ascend into the holy hill. And today we're going to run through that and hopefully get some understanding. All right. Brother Zacho, how are you doing today? I'm doing well, man. Praise the high Hope everybody's doing well today. Um, we hope everybody did your homework, too. So we're going to see how well everybody understood Psalms 15. And hopefully everybody can get some edification to help them in their walk on their journey. All right. Let's jump on into it. Psalms 15, verse 1, please. A psalm of David, Lord, who shall abide in thy tabernacle? Who shall dwell in thy holy hill? This is what we want to know. Who's going to be able to abide in the kingdom? Continue, please. He that walketh uprightly and worketh righteousness and speaketh the truth in his heart. From the onset, we see the necessity to know the commandments, the statutes, the judgments, and the fruits of the Spirit. Because in order to walk uprightly, we have to know what the path of uprightness is. And we only learn that through the words and the laws of our Allah And keeping the commandments alone can't get us there because we also have to work righteousness and the fruits of the Spirit is in all righteousness, goodness, and truth, according to Ephesians 5 and 9. So all has to be done wholeheartedly in simplicity in order to ascend to his holy hill. And as we're learning, this one verse does kind of cover a lot. <laughs> as we're learning the commandments, the fruits of the Spirit, in order to actually work righteousness, we have to speak truth in our heart. We have to be honest with ourselves about who we are and where we are in our walk in order to see the things that we're struggling with to be able to grow in righteousness. So speaking truth, being honest with ourselves, even in our falls and even in our mistakes as we're learning, trying to do the things that we're called on to do, we have to be very honest with ourselves to be able to attain unto the upright walk and work in righteousness and fruits. Uh, continue, please. All right, let me, let me touch on it before we get going. Okay. I'm right here with you. Um, as far as speaking the truth in your heart, right, um, you have to literally be honest with yourself, with what you're struggling with, and sometimes you have to be honest that it's actually you that doesn't want to change. And it's you that's comfortable being where you are. That's why you may not want to hear what someone has to say. You may not want to do what somebody is, is trying to um, speak unto you to, to help you along your journey because you actually are comfortable where you are. And that is a truth that you have to come to admit as well. Um, even when dealing with other people, the way that you may speak to people, the way that you may deal or treat people, you have to understand that you may, in some cases, have a lack of respect for people or pride may be getting in the midst of you where you feel like you know more than people or you're better than people. And these are the things that 
in some in for examples these are things that actually you have to be honest about and speak truth in your heart because other than that you'll never come out of it so anything when it comes to anything as far as speaking truth in your heart if you don't speak truth in your heart about the scenario or whatever is going on you're going to stay there and that's the thing that actually cripples a lot of people and that's why this chapter is so important because we actually have to come out of of lying to ourselves or making it seem one way to justify our our own doings to so that we don't have to say that we were wrong so uh, that was it Kasha. that was essential because usually we get grieved whether grieved with ourselves or grieved with something somebody else is doing and the spirit of anger blinds us with the net of deceit to not see things rightly where we may blame it on oh it's the devil that's doing it and not take accountability or we may look down on other people to feel justified that we're better than them being led by these spirits but speaking that truth really separates us from the iniquity that's going on so that we can see clearly and not be deceived within ourselves so lord willing we get this going so that we can get where we want to be it's interesting seeing where he's about to go after he said he just speaks the truth in his heart <laughs> yeah it says uh, you go start <laughs> go ahead no, i'm gonna read it for you uh <laughs> psalms 15 and 3 he that backbiteth not with his tongue, nor doeth evil to his neighbor, nor taketh up a reproach against his neighbor. That's amazing. That a person, when you get this, when I get to speak the truth to myself and really seeing where I am, I grow compassion for other people. Now, I won't backbite somebody else because I know how hard it is. I know the struggle we're all facing. I'm not going to do evil to my neighbor. I'm not going to look down upon him. I'm going to guard myself to make sure I'm keeping the commandments and walking in the fruits toward him. Nor would I take up a reproach. I'm not going to receive somebody else slandering him because I understand now from knowing my own struggles, slander is an evil spirit, according to the shepherd of Hermas. And I'm more geared to, I'm now, I'm looking toward Allah. I am. I see the struggle I'm in and I see I need help. And now I better understand we all need help. So God and God and everything to make sure I'm in good standing with Allah. I am. <laughs> Not slandering. You, know, you you grow that compassion for other people, like Kasafo said, and you actually walk more circumspectly toward Alahayim and remembering it's Alahayim who pulled you out. And even if you're not a person that Alahayim has pulled out yet, this still can apply to you because there's many people who don't know the knowledge or the wisdom of Alahayim, but yet they still walk in these ways because they still feel the same way. They still feel high-minded or they, or they're walking in pride or they're, um, or they're walking in fear. Fear can also cause the same thing because fear causes you not to change. Fear causes you to to um to be negative about everything that you're not comfortable with. So it, it can apply in so many aspects. So just as far as a person's journey, no matter if they know who they are and know where they're going or where they want to be, it still applies to even a lower level walk because everybody has to start somewhere right right and as we go on to the next verse we can see the shift because we're coming from the lust of the world the lust of the eyes the pride of life and as we're learning ourselves and being honest with ourselves we've seen in this verse three that 
we develop compassion for our fellow man and reverence for Allah I am. Hopefully you can see our love is starting to change our understanding of it, our perspective of it. And we can see it in verse four. Continue, please. In whose eyes a vile person is contemned, but he honoreth them that fear the Lord. He that swears to his own hurt and changeth not. Now, in the world, unfortunately, vile people are honored because evil gets you further along in the world. It gets you the glory of this world. But now, as we're changing, we're starting to understand who true family is, who we ought to really incline ourselves unto. As the scriptures in Sirach speaks of a man that keeps the commandment, that's who you get counsel from, that's who you keep company with. Our honor for them that fear the Lord increases because we grasp like we need that support. We know it's a brotherhood. We know that's the type of person I need to be around to help me continue my journey and a person that's struggling where well a vile person isn't struggling they're actually giving over they're doing they're gone into whatever pleasure they had they were unable to overcome those folks of course we have peace with all men but there's no honor for that person like we don't have respect unto that lifestyle we hope the person change of course we pray the person change but we don't have pleasure in it or honor it as something to look up to because we've now had our eyes open to the better way the path the upright path to life in honoring ahaya gearing our life towards doing what's right toward him and honoring those that fear him as well And then because we continue growing and we get to this place of devoutness, I should say, being devout or reverent toward Allah, I am, no longer will we be the type of people that say things and not do it because we're considerate of our words. When he says, he that swear to his own hurt and changeth not, now, because we're aware of truth and being honest and the power of truth and the power of lying, how it can lead us astray, what we say we're going to do, we're going to do it. And Zachary, it's interesting you touched on fear. We're no longer afraid to avouch what we're going to do. I'm going to serve Ahayala Hayam all the days of my life. And we mean it and we work toward it. We're not afraid to take that step. I'm going to overcome this thing I'm struggling with. Yache enabling me. You've noticed the power of words coming from a whole heart. And we'll grow onto that. And we won't change our mind. We won't be fickle and revert back to whatever thing may have had a grip on us. But we're going for it. And we're not deviating from the path. Did you have anything for that, Zach? Uh, yes, of course. Um, you know how the world says birds of a feather flock together? <laughs> As you can see, the Psalms 15 is almost a process. Um, it says, in whose eyes a vile person is contemned, but he honors them that fear the Lord. It's the process of of how birds of a feather flock together in the change. You're no longer seeing and having that connection with doing things wrong. You start actually connecting with people that are doing things right. And it's the process of change. So instead of flocking with the people that are doing things wrong, you start actually gaining that relationship and gaining those commonalities with the people that are doing things right because you actually want to change and you're actually changing changing the way you think you're changing the way you operate you're changing the things that you desire you actually start aligning your desires with Allah instead of just yourself 
or whatever evil spirits have been connected with you and that are leading you you start actually getting away from those and once you get away from those evil spirits you start being able to see clearly and then you're able to make your own decision and that's when people usually have that moment of truth for that enlightenment moment it's because it's not cloudy anymore and they're actually able to make their own decision though you're going to still struggle but you're able to make that decision to start going in the direction in which you are choosing to go and not being overtaken. And it's crazy. It says, he that swears to his own hurt and change if not, because once you make that decision, you're going to stick to it. No matter how much you have to go through, you're going to stick to it and you're not going to change. You're going to continue going in the same direction. And I think all of us who are are seasoned in our walk we understand um swearing to your own hurt and changing not mm -hmm. like you know yeah. the different things you have to go through all the stuff that you, everybody's been going through all the different seasons all the different temptations all the different tests and trials and you can't change your direction you got to keep going straight no matter what so you know it just it, it really is a process Brother Casa. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. I didn't even realize that hurt, that affliction right. we right. going through to make the changes. Right. <laughs> it's real, <laughs> but we're here. Ain't no turning back. Right. Uh, continuing in verse five. He that putteth not out his money to usury, nor taketh up reward against the innocent. He that doeth these things shall never be moved. Huh. In seeing the process of growth, we had a lesson recently on the religion of the Babylonian deity that it was about money. The world is about money. You can see here how this person grows to the point where even when it comes to monetary things, they're dealing justly. No longer caught up in the world and trying to find ways to get ahead because putting your money out to yours, you try and get some interest on somebody trying to get over there in every aspect, not just how they live, but also monetarily, they're making sure what they do is according to the commandments, just dealings in business in all aspects. And they're not willing to help do somebody else wrong for money because they will not take a reward against the innocent. As David closed out, he that doeth these things shall never be moved. That person is going to abide in Ahia's holy tabernacle. They've studied the commandments. They're studying the fruits of the spirit. They're honest with themselves to see the things they're struggling with and acknowledging, taking accountability of the part that they play and why they're struggling with it. And they're willing to walk the process out, to work it out and keep fighting. They grow step by step. They're growing. A just man falleth and get it back up. They're getting to where they're not going to backbite anybody. They're not going to do evil to their neighbor. They're not going to allow somebody else to reproach their neighbor. So they're not willing to help somebody else do something that's not right. And as they grow in they, the, the humility of seeing the process and what it takes, they start to understand they need help. They need a different circle. The spiritual change comes. They find birds that are flocking in the same direction they're trying to go so that they can be in an environment where they flourish or they get the help they need. And then money is no longer their Allah Hayyam. They're no longer serving mammon. Allah Hayyam only, just dealings in everything they do. This person can't be moved. And so, you know, there's a scripture in the book of the apocalypse of paul i believe it tells how you can see the spirits of the just in the heavens 
the people that are doing right in the world. It may be Hermas or it may be Apocalypse of Paul. Can't recall exactly which book, but doing the right thing really causes us to abide in the holy tabernacle. So all works that we're doing in the earth is building us up in the heavens. Anything else, Zekwa? Yeah. Um, they say a, a, a man that can't be bought is powerful. And the reason being is that he can't be swayed or he can't be moved by anything. Um, even when you look in the New Testament in Acts with um, Simon, the magician, when he tried to buy the Holy Spirit, you know, if it was, who was it, Peter? And who was the other person that was there? Um, I can't remember who was, I think it was Peter and John, okay. I think. Now, if if they wouldn't have been in the faith, truly in the faith, they would have took that money. You know, but being in the faith, it was hard to deter them. You couldn't gain them by money. And what it does is it makes them powerful in their journey. It makes them powerful in their mission because can't nothing sidetrack them. And this is how we're supposed to be. We're supposed to be so in tune and so innate in our journey and in our mission and our purpose and doing the things that Allah has set for us to do that we can't be moved. We can't be moved by anything, anything of carnality, anything that anyone can offer us to take us off of that path or take us off of the journey, anything that the enemy sets before us to try to be a stumbling block to us. We have to just keep going forward no matter what. And just like David said, a man who is like that can never be moved. So we're supposed to be standing upon that rock of Yache, not worrying about the world standards or worrying about having the most money or having the most things or what we're lacking in this carnal world. Because if you're embarking on this journey, you're going to be the least in this world. Like you're not going to have the most. And if you do have a lot, it's because Allah entrusts you to help many other people. Because that's the purpose. Even with um, Thomas, in the Acts of Thomas, when the money had came unto Thomas, when he had taken the money for building the, the mansion for the man, he took the money and he gave it away to the people. And that just shows that Thomas was not moved by anything. He was going to continue to do what Allah had instructed him to do no matter what. And if Allah entrusts you to put that type of money, because money actually um, destroys a man according to the gospel when a man has money so many temptations and lusts come after him and it destroys a man but if Allah entrusts your soul to actually give you money it's not really for you it's for everyone so it, it takes a, a certain level of understanding and that's why you can see, even in this world, how the devil will hurry up and try to give people money, knowing that they're not ready for it, knowing that they're not at the mental capacity or at a spiritual capacity to be able to maneuver and manage with that type of money because it destroys you. So I hope that helps. Hey, Casa, I wanted to find that scripture, man, where it talks about he that shall be rich. He that shall be rich. What are you talking about? You talking about Timothy? Where they fall into many snares and hurtful lust? Yep, that's it. All right. Um, it's first Timothy six, about verse looks like nine. Um, matter of fact, I'm gonna start at eight if you don't mind. Okay. First Timothy chapter six, verse eight. And having food and raiment, let us be there with content. But they that will be rich fall into temptation and a snare, and into many foolish and hurtful lusts, which drown the men in destruction and perdition. 
For the love of money is the root of all evil, which while some coveted after, they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. But thou, O man of Elohim, flee these things and follow after righteousness, holiness, faith, love, patience, meekness. Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life. Whereunto thou art also called and hast professed a good profession before many witnesses. All right, so if you embark on this journey, you're choosing a profession. <laughs> <laughs> I give thee charge in the sight of Elohim, who quickeneth all things, and before Christ Yache, who before Pontius Pilate witnessed a good confession, that thou keep this commandment without spot, unrebukable, unto the appearing of our Lord Yache Christ, which in his times he shall show. Who is the blessed and only potent? the King of kings and Lord of lords, who only hath immortality, dwelling in the light which no man can approach unto, whom no man hath seen nor can see, to whom be honor and power everlasting. Amen. Charge them that are rich in this world, that they be not high-minded, nor trust in uncertain riches, but in the living Elohim who giveth us richly all things to enjoy, that they do good and that they be rich in good works, ready to distribute, willing to communicate, laying up in store for themselves a good foundation against the time to come that they may lay hold on eternal life. And that gives us a focus. It helps confirm what you were relaying that the money was given with purpose. And this helps have the right mindset toward it. This we're doing on the works of Elohim, making sure everyone's taken care of. Thank you, brother. Brothers and sisters, we hope this was edifying and we all got the opportunity to learn something today and get understanding of our goal to attain unto perfection in Yache Christ. Um, questions, comments, feel free to email us at hebrewreaders.com or use the comment section. Um, feel free to check out the website for edification on multiple topics. And with that, Lord willing, we get to spend time with you all again. And peace be with you all. Shalom. Shalom. Thank you.